Welcome back. Well, if you're a regular to my channel, you know that I've spent a lot of time on my videos showing you how I've tried to set up a mixed reality cockpit utilizing the pass-through video of the Quest 3 headset in my favorite simulators, Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane. Unfortunately, the solution wasn't that elegant. It required the use of Steam VR and a program called Reality Mixer. And quite frankly, it was difficult to set up and the loss of performance due to Steam VR just wasn't acceptable. In this video, I'm going to show you another solution that I've come across thanks to one of my viewers who brought it to my attention and how it's probably the easiest way to set up a mixed reality cockpit. The good news is the program is free and available for download from flightsim.to. The app is called Color Panel for Virtual Reality, and the author is Spitice. It allows you to create color panels in the VR cockpit of Microsoft Flight Simulator running OpenXR. And used with Virtual Desktop's Chroma Key Pass-Through, it allows your physical hardware cockpit to show through these areas into virtual reality. The installation and operation are pretty clearly explained on the download page at flightsim.to. But it consists of unzipping the downloaded file and placing it in your community folder. Then the icon will appear in your menu bar in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Before launching the sim, while still in virtual desktop, go ahead and select the streaming settings as well as the color and similarity and smoothness for the pass-through configuration. Once you're in VR, you can show the menu bar and click the click the color panel icon, and that'll open a panel. Currently, the size and shape are not say between session. On the bottom left of the window, you can see uh, the settings. You click that. You can set the color. If it's already been set correctly, it'll be clear. Otherwise, you'll see the, the color if it doesn't match. The second is to change the shape of the window from an ellipse to a rectangle. And finally, you can create an opening in the pass-through to allow VR to appear there again, maybe to show a navigation instrument or something. Once you've opened the pass-through window, you can use the right controller trigger uh, to move the window around. It seems to stay normal uh, to the ray from the controller both in the pitch and yaw. I could not seem to roll it though. It just stays level with the virtual world out there. My simulator is a little bit in disarray due to testing some equipment, so I can't use the full panel sim uh, to show you a demo, but I'm gonna put an air manager panel on this uh, monitor, this 15.6 inch monitor that's uh, showing through the VR pass-through right now. And it'll make it a little bit more realistic as I show you how this works. Uh, during a flight. Okay, now that I have the Air Manager panel launched on the 15.6 inch monitor, let's uh, open up the uh, panel again. And you can see there it is in the background. And we can move that around and try to line that up with the edges of the monitor. You can see how I've kind of angled, it's angled a little bit to uh, uh, out on the left side and in on the right side because I'm using my right hand at the angle. I almost need to take the controller and put it in front of my uh, my chest to get the right angle to make it lie uh, parallel uh, to the monitor, the actual monitor. So this is going to take a little bit of getting used to. You can see how we can move the uh, horizontal and the vertical dimensions of the window. There is a limit how big it can be. Um, and then once you have the window the size how you want it, you can move it around. And uh, that's pretty much as big as it'll go right there. And uh, that's it. So it's a limit to what you can do with this. It would be great though, you can see if you have a keyboard or if you had a autopilot control box or, or even to put a, a clipboard on your knee and put a a pad to write your clearances, uh, you could use this for that very easily in VR and that would be perfect. I'm actually more interested in trying to get a full panel displayed and uh, the squared corners aren't good. Uh, I'd like to see some options, uh, some other options. 
It would be nice if you could have multiple panels like in uh, Reality Mixer to cover different areas. Sometimes I'm having trouble releasing this. I don't know. The trigger seems to hang up and I can't quite release the corner. So I don't know if that's a bug or just the way I'm doing it. But anyway, we get the, uh, we want to get it in the right position to give us uh, as much panel as we can. You can see my honeycomb uh, flight control and throttle. All that stuff is visible there, as is the wall of my house and a knobster that's not connected right now to this panel. As I said, I was testing out some yokes and I had removed all this stuff. And when I found out about this, I wanted to try it out and I kind of threw this together to try to get a chance to try it out before, uh, uh, before I try to reestablish this sim. So let's go take it for a flight and see what's, see what's going on here. Instead of the link cable, I believe I'm using the Wi-Fi 6 and I don't get quite as good a performance, so this may be a little choppy, but it'll give you the idea how this works. It's kind of tricky keeping things lined up, but it is much easier than Reality Mixer. As I showed before, on the bottom uh, left of the window, there is that area that you can click to uh, open the menus, as we saw earlier. On the bottom right, there's a, a button that you can click to uh, collapse, the, to actually close the window temporarily, and it opens a little dot uh, that you can click to reestablish it. So uh, I'll go down here and I'll click the bottom right in just a second here, and you'll see the window close. So I click it, and it'll open up a small little dot. You see the little dot just above the yoke there? I'll click that little dot right there and it opens the window back up. It would be nice if you could toggle the window open and close using an assigned controller or joystick button. It really would be nice if there was a way to, if, if there are multiple panels open, if there was a way to group them so that they stayed oriented to one another and also a way to save the configuration so it could be used in future sessions. The positions of the relative panels were memorized or saved. Of course the ultimate would be the ability to create a 2D graphic with the pass-through color that could be placed into a window imported into the program and put into a window that's sized correctly and a correct aspect ratio to hold that and even have transparency with openings that you might use to show certain navigation the glass instruments and so on through allow uh, parts of the actual VR cockpit to show in your pass-through window. Currently the max panel width just really limits you from showing an entire instrument panel. Positioning the panel with the controller is a little bit difficult for precision. It would be nice if there were some key commands or controller inputs that you could use to make fine corrections in all six degrees of motion. Roll, pitch, and yaw, and also to move it laterally uh, in all three axes. The final issue with mixed reality is keeping the pass-through opening aligned with the real-world hardware. Once the pass-through panel has been placed in VR, it stays oriented in that coordinate system. The problem is every time you re-enter VR or reset the VR view by pressing the right controller meta button, the entire VR world shifts slightly and loses alignment with the actual hardware. When using Reality Mixer, it became even more complicated because when Steam VR is initialized, it also sets up its new orientation. So the color pass-through boxes in the simulator were not tied together as they are with this system. So the best solution is to model the 3D pass-through areas into the actual aircraft and have them fixed, then with an LVAR to be able to show and hide those boxes. I found this to be a steep learning curve to learn these skills, and if anyone out there wants to work with me, uh, help me develop that, give me a, a note in the comments. I'd love to work with you. I know I may be preaching to the choir here with this audience, but uh, virtual reality is the wave of the future, I believe, for flight training, to have the ability to see the beautiful VR world and also have access with your own hands to the cockpit. Now I know I said in my previous videos using a reality mixer that I didn't think this was ready for prime time. I don't feel the same way about using color panel because it doesn't have some of the limitations. First, it doesn't require Steam VR and it also will operate under OpenXR. While I don't believe it's ready yet for full panel mixed reality, 
I do think it's quite useful to be able to visually access certain parts of your physical cockpit while still wearing your VR headset offers some real advantages. Let me warn you that mixed reality like VR isn't very well depicted on a 2D video medium. You really need to try it out. The good news is it's free so if you fly Microsoft Flight Simulator using a Quest 3 I strongly encourage you to give this a try for yourself even if you're only going to play around with it. I think the more people that are exposed to mixed reality the greater chance that developers will come along and create the tools that we need like the ones that Vario has produced for its very fine mixed reality headsets. Hats off to Spitais for developing this program. Hope it'll continue to develop and improve and mature. Also I'd like to acknowledge Virtual Desktop which made this all possible by offering the capabilities of this chroma key color pass-through. Finally, I'd like to thank you, the viewers of this channel that's supported by watching these videos. As you know, I'm retired. I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this because it's my passion. But it does encourage me when people subscribe, uh, comment, share this with their friends. For my subscribers, I promise you that I'll only send out videos when I find something that I think is unique, innovative, or fun. If you like my videos, I ask that you give me a thumbs up. Just like it, share, subscribe, and I love your comments. Hope to see you at my next video. Have a great day.